Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of my fr favorite French actresses, Mylène Jampanoy, also no born as Lena Jampanoy on 12th of July 1980. She's a French actress, model and visual artist. Her first leading role was in the drama film The Chinese Botanist Daughter in 2006. She subsequently garnered international attention for her role in Pascal Luquier's controversial horror film The Martyrs in 2008. She later had a supporting role in Clint Eastwood's Hereafter in 2010 and starred as Bam Bo in the Serge Gainsborough's biopic Gainsborough A Heroic Life, also made in the same year. Other film credits include the American animated film Kung Fu Panda in 2008, the Canadian drama Lawrence Anyways, and the Netflix produced Madame Claude in 2021. In addition to her acting and modeling career, Jampanoy is also a painter whose works have been exhibited at Paris's Galerie Sobering. Milan Jampanoy was born Leda Jampanoy on 12th of July 1918 in Auxin Province, Bouche du Rhône, France, to a Chinese father and a French Breton mother. Her father, who immigrated to France from China through Vietnam, abandoned the family when she was three years old and later established a prosperous textile business in Canada. Jampanoy was raised by her mother, who worked as a cashier at the food retailer Raleigh. As a teenager, Jampanoy fled her family home due to her mother's severe depression and lived with her boyfriend in a Paris squad. She eventually returned to her family home in Aux de Provence to complete her education, earning a scientific, scientific bachelorette at the age of 17. While still a teenager, she was taken under the wing of a 35-year-old male attorney in the same city who became her mentor. After she earned her bachelor's degree, he urged her to pursue a career in law, but she insist instead relocated again to Paris to pursue acting and modeling. After appearing in the French television series Sous le Soleil, Jampanoy had a minor part in the action thriller Crimson Rivers 2 Angels of the Apocalypse in 2004, followed by a supporting role in the 36th Precinct, also in 2004, a crime thriller star starring Danielle Autillo and Gerard Depardieu. She was then cast in the independent drama film Wally of the Flowers in 2006. Next, Jampanoy starred in the drama The Chinese Botanist's Daughter, a role which necessitated her to phonetically learn Chinese. In 2007, she became the face of Dior Snow Cosmetics in Asia for Louis Vuitton Cosmetics and traveled to Japan and South Korea to present the brand. She subsequently appeared on the cover of Asian Elle magazine. Jampanoy gained international attention for her role in Pascal Luquier's controversial horror film The Martyrs, which was filmed in Montreal. Jampanoy took the role against the advice of her agent and later stated that making the film was emotionally difficult due to its extreme content. Every night when I went back to my room, I just cried because I was so physically and psychologically tired. All my scenes were violent. Also in 2008, she had a minor voice role in the American animated comedy film Kung Fu Panda as Major Viper. Next, she appeared in the French mockumentary film The Ball of Actresses in 2009, directed by Mai Vien, and in 2010, had a supporting role in Clint Eastwood's drama Hereafter, playing a news reporter. The same year, she starred in the Serge Gainsborough biopic Gainsborough A Heroic Life, portraying the actress Bambo. In 2017, Jampanoy guest starred on the Apple TV UK series Kills Kills and reprised her role in the film sequel of the series Kills Kills 2 in 2018. 
She subsequently had a central role in Made in China, a comedy film about a French Chinese family preparing for a wedding, directed by Julian Abraham. She then had a supporting role in the Netflix released Madame Claude in 2021, which is a biopic about the French brother owner Madame Claude. In addition to acting, Jean Ponoy is also a visual artist whose paintings were exhibited in the spring of 2022 at the Paris Gallery Sobering as part of the Athens Nest Pass in Greece. Literal translation Athens is not in Greece show. Jean Ponoy married Indian supermodel and actor Milind Somand in Goa in 2006. They met during the shooting of their film Wally of the Flowers. The two divorced in 2009. In the summer of 2014, she gave birth to a son, Andreas Vasily, from her longtime partner, Greek producer Dimitris Stefanides. Jean Panoy is a Roman Catholic and was baptized in the church in 2015, though she was expressed criti criticism of the church's clerical celibacy policies. She also stated her support of the legalization of same-sex marriages in France. And from one of her really, really rarest interviews, she goes into more detail on her career, personal life and experience as a mother. Back in 2014, she meets with the journalists of My First Suitcase, a French little newspaper, to discuss her ongoing career and projects. So, do you, you have a little boy or a little girl? It's a little boy who is scheduled to be born in mid-July. This is the final stretch for you. Maybe you give birth on your birthday. I see that you're well informed. Yes, I know. I missed my vocation as a journalist. You are from France, um, from Aux and Provence, and you live in Paris. Where do you want to give birth? Precisely, this is a question I still ask myself when in doubt. I registered in two maternity hospitals, the Maternity of the Star in Aux en Provence and the Clinique des Bleuts in Paris. Do you have any desires for um, any cravings? Oh yes, green vegetables such as beans, peas and so on. Would you like to breastfeed? I'm going to try. My spouse Dmitri is very attached to this mother-child relationship. He is of course of Greek origin, you know, and with them it's really important. But in any case, he will respect my choice. Are you taking childbirth preparation courses? Classes of what? She laughs. I'm very serene and don't feel like I need classes. Maybe I'm wrong, but I like things come as they come. But. Reassure me, have you prepared for your uh, baby's room? Um, yes, I have the essentials, of course, and everything um, that's in my suitcase I, di I discovered, and I think I am really prepared. And do you often buy from the internet? Um, living in Paris, I like to stroll and shop. I don't necessarily have the internet reflex but for the type of concept like yours which I discovered in the waiting room of the Etoile Maternity Hospital in Provence it's magical and definitely a great idea. What are your future plans with your spouse and your little child? So I have a great desire to produce my own film. Dmitri is in the film industry and he encourages me to do so. But for now, I want to enjoy the end of my uh, pregnancy and enjoy my baby at least until his six months. Thank you, Milan, for the time you have devoted to me and I wish you a beautiful end of the pregnancy where the interview ends and they go on to exit the hotel that the interview was taking place and the journalist kind of goes into like explanation for what she's wearing how she's dressed and how kind she was and so on and so on on the occasion of the release of the dvd of the fire of the Bhutanist by Aurelien we were able to talk to Milen Japanoi who plays the main role in Dai Suji's latest film 
the young French actress looks back on her film debut, her discovery of Asia, and gives her point of view on today's cinema in Europe and Asia. When you went up to Paris to try to get the main role of Balzac and the little Chinese tailor, you had just read the book and you went directly to see the producer of the film. Even if you were not taken, what is your view on this adaptation, quite different from the book? You who thought you could play the little tailor? What bothers me is that when I read the book and saw the movie afterwards, um, I was unnecessarily disappointed. I have always imagined a very different character for me. Balzac, as he was filmed while he is, he is the same author, writer and director, has nothing to do with what I had imagined. I'm quite disappointed, but that's how it's for all of the films I see that are inspired by, um, by a book I read. I saw it quite differently, but when I went to see the producer, I arrived with a lot of dreams, fantasies and desires to make the movie. For me, she was the only one who produced Asian films. And it was very naive of me to take a step like this, to go see a producer at her house and tell her that I would very much like to meet Dai, because I would like to be the um, main point of the film. Today it seems absurd to me, but with hindsight I wouldn't do something like that anymore. But it's a very spontaneous, very naive, very young approach, and without really thinking I didn't even know what a shoot was. I had only liked it and I wanted to uh, let him know. I hadn't thought about all this. Today with hindsight I tell myself that I did well to do the movie and the Balzac and the uh, little Chinese tailor. Why? Because who is the character? Because Min, who is the character of the Bertrand's daughter, is a character who is more modern by his career and I understand her better because his frustration she suffers and she's a very troubled character in the movie as well. Was it the first time you went to China? Yes, for this film, I was. This was my first time in China. But you traveled a lot with your previous films. The first film I made was the Volley of the, the Volley of the Flowers, which has still not been released, uh, which is coming out soon. It comes out in January, and yes, how do you know that? Um, with the internet, we know everything, and then it's a bit of our role to know everything. I'm not even sure that the date has been announced yet. I've I've learned it from my producer not long ago. We are often the last informed. In short, it's something else. Yes, I had done four months in the Himalayas. Already I had been a little trained to shoot in a little special condition outside my country, far from my family, far from my friends, um, in very solitary work atmospheres. And in these short months, short four months in the Himalayas, after that, you can definitely shoot anything and anywhere. And the shooting ended in Japan. Yes, the shooting ended, ended in Japan. Since you didn't see the film, I can't tell you, but I'm not much in Japan anymore. It's a lot of Asian countries in a short time. What memories do you keep of these different periods, these different places? Already it's very difficult to get back to working in the suburbs of Paris, in the studios. You see when you shot at 5000 meters above sea level or at 8000 meters above sea level, it's difficult to return to your reality. It's already unreal in a moment of fiction that is cinema, which is a theme out of reality. And then you find yourself in places, absolutely extraordinary settings. I was on a cloud, it was more than a dream come true. I had hardly ever been to Asia, I had just gone to Singapore for little things like that before turning there. And it's crazy to go there in a work context, because at the same time I have found origins that are mine. Inevitably, it's half of me. 
great absence of the father so I completely idealized my Asian side I watched a lot of Asian movies it was one of the things I wanted and to get there by discovering people, their culture, to understand them better because whether they're the Japanese, the Vietnamese, the Chinese or the Indians they're absolutely different, they have nothing to do with it and that you understand and it, after at least two months discovering my half while working it was extraordinary and really insane you were talking about Asian cinema what are the films you watch? Those that have marked or even inspired you. I really like Park Chan Wook, who made Old Boy and Lady Vengeance, and I would love to work with him. I watched a lot of manga, in fact, I watched a lot of manga, I played video games, and then the cinema. Wong Kar Wai, there are a lot of movies I've seen, movies you never see in France, imported DVDs. I had one of my neighbors who was absolutely hysterical of Asian and Japanese cinema. He loved these women who are like crazy um, characters and everything about revenge. But it was very interesting to see. There are horror movies for example too. I like Asian hist hysteria um, as well like the crazy scenes, the drive that they're in these movies and the aesthetics of course so for me it's an avant-garde cinema, very modern and that is beyond all cinemas around the world and I globalize it a little bit it's difficult to say Asian cinema we can talk about Chinese, Japanese cinema we have nothing to do with that either and to summarize it, it's the aesthetic, the story the way they highlight women, they're always necessarily sublim sublimated there are women's roles that are such more interesting and that have been made by Asians than most of the French roles we are given The film has been criticized for its aesthetic being finally its main issue. What is your opinion on the issue? I think we are used to the stories being shocking that at some point there are more fights, there are more um, demands about these kind of scenes and that the actors go wild and that we are upsetting. First of all, it's inspire inspired by a real fact real um, event Dai once read this story in the newspaper and he tried to make a film of it and it happens in the 80s and it happens in China so when you say that aesthetics erases the story of the game why not for some Europeans but you should know that in China the film is not allowed to be released because it's too violent by the subject and some of the characters are too much for the public um, but everything is relative and so as long as we release that in other countries it's very very legitimate this is one of the rarest interviews I have found of her she's definitely um, not very public and only appears on a few articles here and there for her entire career um yeah anyway let me know what you guys think and stick around for more inspiring videos to come bye